Hello everyone, my name is Steve B. Ampa and today I'll be walking you through how you can use the select function in the dplyr package to manipulate your data as a way of selecting columns in your data set. Now, these are the libraries that we'll be using, so let's get them loaded in. And these are the steps that we'll be going through reading our data set and then we will look at the select function and these are the arguments that go into the select function gives us several options for selecting columns in the data set now there are two functions that can help us read in the data set is a read or csv and read underscore csv i prefer the read underscore csv because it tells you upfront the type of variable that you've read in whether it is an integer double which is real character or factor and I'll demonstrate that with an example now this is the read.csv I'm going to read it in read the data set in and let's see how the data set comes in and I forgot to tell you this is a data set from a clinical trials that I found online so it, it just overwhelms the console but if you look at the read underscore csv it reads it in and just tells you the first few variables treatment and x are character variables that's why it's shown in red it's not an error and let's see how you can it's, it's, it puts that on the screen you see that it's just arranged so nicely and it calls it a table T-I-B-B-L-E and you can see straight away how many observations and columns that you have in there and for each variable that it shows here you can see the type whether it is real character factor numerical you know it tells you everything and that is one advantage that I like uh, on uh, read underscore CSV compared to the reader CSV it also has this function that goes with it the read underscore csv the function's name is spec if you see spec of the data set it just read in it's going to tell you the, the type of variable for all the columns that you have in your data set and i think this is very useful because knowing the type of variable that is read in is very important sometimes i can read numeric values like age as a string and if you don't know, you know, you could run into errors and that kind of stuff. So that's why I prefer to use the read underscore CSV. Now let's get started with the main thing that we need to learn here is select. Now, before you select your columns, you need to know the names that are there. So if I say names, I see these. And for the first example, we have ID, treatment, sex, and BMI are the ones that I want to select. So the function is select followed by the data that you're interested in and then you list the columns that you want to. So if I run that, I get this. Now you can also put the indexes of these variables that you're interested in. Indexes are the column positions. So ID is in position one, treatment is position two, and you can also get it. You can put the positions also in the form of a vector and still pass it to this and it works the same way you know it, it works perfectly you can also put your variables that you want to select in quotes and it also works you can put them in a vector form and it works you can store these columns that you want to subset into an object called my vars and pass it on to the select function and it will still work for you now for the rest of this tutorial we i'm going to use the pipe operator because it makes reading are very easy what is a pipe operator the pipe operator i'm talking about is percent greater than percent if we have x percent greater than percent f it means f of x so this lines of code that we have up here can be written like this data pipe operator then we write select add it makes it very easy for you to see what is happening all right the next 
an argument that we can pass to the select is one of we can also say it should do one of my bars and it selects it for you the you can also say any of and it can also select that for you any of now what is the difference between one of and any of now if you see this my vase one has trxx the actual name is trx you don't have txx so i intentionally got it wrong here and what it means is that if you use any of on a variable that is not in the data set it won't pass any warning to you but if you see my vas one if i should put my vas one in here it's going to work but it will pass this warning to us that hey tricks trxx is not in your data set so if you don't want to see this warning there and thinking some variables might change then you want to use any of instead of one of so let's take this one off now the next one is everything you can pass everything so it's sometimes in your data set let me let's let's look at this one i wanted to say names oh that's fine now sometimes you can look at your data set and you want to work with maybe up the pain is way at the end and you want to bring it in front so another way of doing it is that whatever you want to bring in front relocate them it's to do put them in front here and for the rest of the variable names you can list them all so you can use everything and remember everything should have parentheses for it to work if you don't bring your parentheses it won't work so remember some functions don't need that so when we get there i will let you know so it now would bring up up the pain abdominal pain in front and you can have it there as you want the next one is ends with so if you look at the variable names if you have something like that ends with a qt and you want to select it there could be many you don't want to write them all you can list the variables that you want and then you can also continue to say ends with qt so that anything that ends with qt will be brought in so we can see that the ones that are listed here are there and those that ends with a qt and you can do the same thing with stats with p so if you because we put stats with p all the variables we listed are here and those that starts with p continues from potassium less protein and PR or start with T you can mix and match you can mix and match them starts with P starts with P you can write as many start with P as much as you want and then you can also do ends with you know you can mix them and it, it, it pulls them for you so that anything that starts with an S will be brought in smoking soda anything that ends with abs if you can find it here then you know by default it doesn't list them all it puts the rest of the data here you can see monocytes abs so all these ones are there now the use of contains as an argument in a select function you can also use contains if your variables names contain or that you want to so these are the variable names you can also select those that contain or for example this variable contains or so if you run it it's just going to bring those ones in yes and we have those that contains or and those that contains orr now matches and contains work the same way so you choose which one you want matches or and or brings in the same data set because if it matches this then it contains that too right so then sometimes you are also interested in selecting variables that run from one variable to another variable everything inclusive of the ends 
So here, because the clinical trials data said you might be interested in just adverse events. Adverse events in the data set starts from the 11th column and it's headache, abdominal pain, and it goes all the way to upper respiratory infection. So I would just say headache and you use this column and then you specify the last variable and it selects them all with the ends inclusive. So these variables are there. We have zero, one, one indicating is present. So we have headache pain. It goes all the way to abdominal pain, depending on how you want to select it. This is cool. You can also use logical pretest here. Um, the factorial sign means negative. They mean the same negative sign here and factorial means the complement. So if I don't want to see the adverse events, I can put a factorial sign here and say, take all these ones out and give me the rest of the data. And it's going to give it to you without the headache. And that's the factorial. Instead of factorial, you can also put a negative sign and it still works with it. It means the same thing. It works negative. The apply is wonderful. Now you can also mix and match. You can say, give me all the adverse events or those that starts that do not start with a okay because i have a factoria it negates it so i have to say do not start with a okay and it, it selects all that too for you you can also use an end operator you should start with a okay and then end with false so it's just one variable that, that that's it starts with a okay and with ph OS. And remember to put your string in quotes right for it to work. This is the same thing we've talked about negative sign. You can also put a negative sign in front of contains. So if it contains weak and then you take, you put a negative sign, it says, give me everything except all variables that contain weak. So I think I, I point to a different one. So yes, that four. It gives you everything in the data set except the one that contains weak. It should have been a third variable, it's not there. Now the use of the well operator. Now the well operator here is saying that select all columns where the variable is numeric where is numeric this is how you do that and it selects all the numeric variables for you and it throws out the numeric the character columns away you can also do it here this one i think they want to face it out so initially if you run it gives an error and then after that it will not give because it's given the first warning it won't come back again so this and that gives the same thing but i'll suggest you use the one that says where is numeric you know uh, this one to if it if you want to select the character variables then there are just three of them the drug treatment group the sex and the race are character variables in the data set you can miss a match you can also bring factorial in front and it, it should still work now the select if and where here give the same results so whichever one that you want select if then you put in the character so this is a function it it will not take parentheses just like i said unlike everything that if you put the parentheses in front you will throw in an arrow so you want to make sure you don't have these parentheses just like we have it for everything all right so you can mix and match, put in what you want in front of the word clause and it should still work. Now, relocate is not a select function, it's, but it does something similar to the select and it's in the same package. So I just wanted to bring it. Sometimes you want to move some set of columns in front. And this is what you do. If I want to bring all variables that ends with apps in front relocate them whilst the others continue 
then this is the code that I have to use. So you see that all the apps have come in front and then the rest of the data continues from there. Now, the select act and the select all helps you to make changes to the variable names. So what you do is that select act. Anytime you do select act, then you identify the columns that you want to work on with vars. Then you pass the function that is going to make changes to the names. It just changes the names. So this one, it says that to upper. To upper is a function that changes from a lowercase to uppercase. So it says that select all variables that ends with A, the string A. Now you have to remember to say vars in front for it to work and it will change just the names to uppercase for you. Now, for example, when you're working on the clinical trials data set like this, you might be interested in just selecting the baseline data set and then trying to merge it back so that you can subtract it from, you know, follow up data entries. And usually after filtering it, you want to probably put baseline as part of the column names. And this is a small function I've written here. And what it's doing is that, okay, pick the variable name and then put a baseline BSL in front. So that's the function. It's not part of the select thing that I'm talking about. So what I want to do is that select act. Then all the variables that end with this and I'll pass the function I just wrote. And it is just going to add baseline to all the names, BSL dot, BSL dot, BSL dot. So this is the end of the tutorial. And uh, look out for our next video that will help us subset the rows and not the columns using the filter function and the slice function. Thank you for listening to this video and bye-bye. Adios.